It's about connecting and it's about social media and it's about a lot of cool things, but not forgetting where we came from. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Mainwaring. Good evening, everyone. I'm Australian, which is why I sound funny. And I have to say, first up, oh my God, hallowed ground right here. As Australians, we put American pop culture on a pedestal. And the talent that is performed on this stage is incredible. So while I want to thank our sponsors, make it work in the Biden Room and the Comedy Store and Yahoo, I must also honor the comedy gods, excuse me. <laughs> that will stop the floor from involuntarily consuming me due to a chronic lack of talent. But, um, you know, we thank our sponsors and we thank um, the volunteers, but I also really want to thank Jeff for what he just said in his talk. Um, as Eric mentioned, I come from a long history of traditional advertising and then I moved into digital advertising and then deep into new media and I now consult for a number of different clients a year. And what you got from Jeff at the opening of his talk this evening was a window into the future of business. It was not anyone being effusive or excited or enamored with the possibilities of social, social media. It was a window into the future of business. So I look around the room tonight, I'm amazed how many of you are here. I hear all the time people are like, I haven't got time to use Facebook. I haven't got time to use Facebook and Twitter. I haven't got time to use Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, Goala. LinkedIn, yet all of us are here. Which begs the question, what did we do at work before there was social media? Did any of us in this room actually do anything at all? So, thank you all for being here. I really, really do appreciate it. And we're here to talk about the real-time web. And I would like to do something a little unexpected in that I would like to talk about some of the key principles we rush past in our hurry to take advantage of these new tools. In terms of what those principles do in allowing us to leverage them in the right way. So I'm going to talk about three things. The first thing are the five major trends that are coming together right now that are, could, that are going to transform the web even as you know it. Transform the web even as this literate, literate audience understands it today. Secondly, I want to talk about the four principles that everybody overlooks and I, that I invariably come across in my work with brands. And then finally, I want to give you three rules to live by that will enable you to succeed in this new marketplace. So, five trends, four principles that are overlooked, and three rules. Now, the first of those trends is something we all know a little bit about. Social media, correct? Who knows the latest figure on Facebook? How many users are there? Is it 420 million? Over 500 million already? Yeah. And yet Facebook isn't even in the top 10 of social networks in China. In fact, in terms of size, in fact, if you went to South by Southwest this year and went to the China talk, you would have heard them say that the most talked about brand across social media in China is the Ford Focus. There are 140,000 messages a day about the Ford Focus in China. And they're not congregating around the Ford site. They're congregating around the nicknames that different communities have for their car. For example, my little rabbit, or my little darling, or, or whatever it might be in Chinese. So not only do we have people talking about the brand to that extent, they're doing it in communities around nicknames, which is one product of a brand being talked, uh, talked about across multiple platforms. That's how sophisticated the consumers are already even more sophisticated than the brands, and in my experience, often more sophisticated than their advertising agency partners. The second trend, we know about this as well, mobile. You know how our kids all ignore us and have no eye contact anymore? That was the one thing I missed at South by Southwest this year, just seeing the color of somebody's eyes. There was everybody huddled over in the corner. We're all in the communication business, we're all about connectivity, we're all huddled in a corner in hoodies. You know, collapsed over, looking for a PowerPoint, trying to find an AT&T signal. But, uh, mobile. Now, the UK firm Coda just came out with a statistic that they estimate that mobile data usage will increase 40 times by 2015. 
So as much as you think smartphones and usage of social networking on smartphones is ubiquitous today, 40 times more in the next, not 10 years, in the next four years. In fact, Facebook is growing faster on mobile phones than it is on desktop right now. The third trend, Foursquare, Gowala, and as we all know in the next six or eight days, the, uh, the bully in the schoolyard, the, uh, the, the behemoth will wade into it as Facebook launches its LBS, its location-based system. And did you hear today that Mark Zuckerberg flew to meet the CEO of Foursquare in New York? Wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall in there? So, uh, <laughs> let's talk. Um, so that's the third one, location-based. The fourth one is actual applications in your smartphones, but ones that directly relate to the business and how we're going to, to business and how we're going to practice it in the next few years. Who's heard of Baku? Baku rates is a mobile application that rates the social responsibility of a given brand and allows you just to scan the barcode of a product in the store. Who's heard of BrandKarma.com? That was launched a few weeks ago by Craig Davis in Australia. That aggregates the social responsibility of any given brand and rates it using a lotus flower how they treat their employees, you know, how, how environmentally responsible their production methods are, their corporate responsibility program. So in a snapshot, you can be in a store and go, you know what, given two equals, I would choose this brand because of how socially aware they are. That is the power that's being put in the consumer's hands to make mindful decisions. And then fifthly, wow, the F8 conference two weeks ago, the brouhaha over Facebook trying to turn the entire web social. I actually uh, defended Facebook today in a post um, in support of Jeff Jarvis. And then, you know when things start getting hot and everyone's sort of arguing and then you think, I could either try and be nice about this, or we could stir the pot. So I emailed my, I tweeted my, tweeted my friends in, uh, in London and they stirred the pot even further. And pretty soon we had this huge international argument about privacy.